as a speaker, from the beginning, I, I did a lot of things myself, from, from publishing my own books and uh, doing my videos, and I have my own video studio. And very often I was told by other speakers, uh, more su successful speakers than I am, that I should focus on doing my craft, so developing my content, delivering my content, and hire other people to do all those other things. And I felt very defensive, and, and you might be feeling very defensive, and you know, at the beginning it was really just a matter of money. I can't afford to have somebody do those other things for me. But later it became more strategic. I'm, I'm more strategic in how I think about what I'm going to be doing myself versus what I'm going to outsource other people to. Uh, the first thing is when I teach entrepreneurship in college or, or even when I teach kids how to be entrepreneurs, one of the things I tell them is that you need to be able to, to be willing to get your hands dirty. And getting your hands dirty really means that there's... You may not do everything, but you should be willing to do everything. And so the decision on what you do versus what you don't do needs to be a lot more strategic. So let me start with, uh, and, and this is by no means a comprehensive list of what are the type of things that you may be either doing yourself or hiring somebody or you'll see what the options are. So the first thing is content development. This is the development of the content that you deliver to your customers because at the end of the day, you're delivering value to them and that value is incorporated a lot in the content. It's not just your delivery. The second one is the content delivery. Now, these two are going to be in different color than, than the rest because frankly, if you're even considering outsourcing delivering or uh, creating the content or delivering the content, then as a professional speaker or facilitator or trainer, I have to ask, so what is it that you do exactly? So these two things, content development and content delivery, I'm, I'm going to say those are probably things that you will always do yourself because this is your core. This is what you deliver. Now we get to the sales part, so making calls. And, and I know that there are going to be people who believe that you can outsource making calls versus those who believe that if it's not you who make the call, nobody can sell you better than you. So I'm going to leave this in gray and everything else is going to be in a different color. Next part is research. For your content, you may need to have some research done. Now, do you do your own research or do you outsource research to somebody else? And research is what gives you the data on which you're going to be developing your content. So you typically start with a hypothesis or I want to know something, a question, and then somebody needs to answer it. So research is one element. Another one is preparing the presentations themselves. So slides need to look, the content needs to look good. Some people just speak without any slides, without any background, so that's not an issue. But if you need some slides in the background, you know what? People do look at what they look like. So preparing the presentation. Writing. Writing the book. Do you write your own books or articles or do you hire somebody like a ghostwriter to do it for you? Publishing the book. So you have the book, you have the manuscript, you have the content. How about formatting? How about the entire process of publishing? That's another element. By the way, so far, everything I'm telling you, I'm actually doing myself for myself and I'm doing it on a strategic basis. And at some point, I, I do outsource some of those things out and I'll talk to you about uh, what, what are the possibilities. Videography or photography. Do you take your own videos? Do you shoot your own videos? Do you have your own video studio? Or do you go out and do your videos in some, somebody else's studio? Photography is taking pictures. Video editing. It's one thing to shoot the videos. It's another one to edit the videos. Do you do that yourself? Do you hire someone to do it for you? Photoshop your images, creating images that didn't exist before. And it's not just the picture that you took, but what you do with that picture. Digital marketing. Digital marketing is a big deal today. This is how people get access to your content. Is this something that you do or do you outsource it? Web design, design your own website. Uh, online courses, developing online courses for your content that include your content. And again, even with online courses, there's the development of the content itself for those courses. There is the formatting, editing, shooting the videos and everything else around it. So this is by no means a an, an all-inclusive list, but this is an example of uh, what, what are the type of things that you may 
ask yourself, do I do it myself or do I outsource it? In my case, and, and I'm, I'm not bragging in any way, shape or form, because as I said, this is a strategic decision. Pretty much everything in this list are things that I do myself and are things that are including in this pro included in this program. So I'm going to share and I am sharing how I'm doing these things. Second thing is we consider only two alternatives typically, and that is I do it myself or I pay somebody else to do it. Well, I'm going to give you five options. And frankly, there are more options than this. So the first one is I do it myself. Pretty cut and dry. I do it myself start to finish. May not be start to finish. Maybe part of it you're, you're going to do yourself. The second is I hire someone and I tell them exactly what to do. So this is typically when you would hire an intern or you would hire somebody at very low pay. I hired my daughters to do some of those things. You can hire students and uh, give them the opportunity, pay them. It's, it's good to be paid. But you're hiring somebody that does not know how to do things. And you would typically do that because this is something that has to be done over and over and over and over again. It takes time, but it does not take significant skill or significant knowledge. So you would have to teach them how to do that. You would have to tell them how to do that. So we're looking at outsourcing it to someone um, where you really control their work. You, you really guide them. The next one is to hire somebody who knows how to do it. So for example, take digital marketing. There are people who know how to do digital marketing. There are people who know how to develop websites. So you hire somebody because they already know how to do that and you don't. So you need to specify it to them. Why, by the way, is it important for you to know how to do this even if you outsource it? Because then you know what to ask. You know what the options are. By the way, it's important that you know when you hire somebody like an intern, because then you have to be the one guiding them based on your skill. But even when you hire somebody who knows how to do that, just knowing their language and knowing what to ask for is going to be important. Then there is hire a firm, hire a company that knows how to do that. In this case, they may have their own interns. They know they have the skills and capabilities and experience, but they're going to have people that can do that for you. And you would typically want to hire somebody like this when you don't want it or hire a company when you don't want to be too dependent on one person. And when you need the, the amount of volume of work that you need is more than one person can handle. So you want somebody to kind of manage them. And that's when you need a company. There's one more option. You know what that is? Don't do it. You don't have to do everything. You don't. Well, you probably do have to have a website, digital marketing, maybe, maybe not, depending on your market, depending on what you do. Uh, so online courses, maybe you don't need online courses, maybe you don't need videos, whatever is it that may just not make sense for you to do at all. Don't pay anybody, don't learn how to do it, don't do it yourself, just don't do it. Okay, next part is, should you do it yourself or should you outsource it? There is a list of questions that I'm going to go through, and, and even that list is as comprehensive as it might be, is probably not an all-inclusive list of, of all the considerations you must take, but I'm going to take you through some of them. And for each one of them, ask yourself this question, answer it, and the answer is going to help you make that decision. And it's really the cumulative answer to all of those questions that would help you make that decision. One, do I need the flexibility? I'll tell you something. I know that several speakers go to a studio, book a studio for a full day, record like 50 videos that day, and then they have enough content for the year. I really love the flexibility of getting up in the morning, having an idea for a video, and two hours later, that video is shot in my own video studio, edited on my own computer, and posted. Do I need that flexibility or do I really need to have, if, if we're talking about videos, I need one video a week and uh, I don't need that kind of flexibility that I love to have. Am I creative enough? Creativity to me is, uh, some people think that it's genetic. I'm, I'm either creative or I'm not. I, I think that genetics do play a role. I think that everything you went through to the day, from the day you got up, uh, you, you were born until today helps uh, affects your creativity. I think that your environment, which actually you can control, affects your creativity. But I think that it's also a learned skill. So when you ask yourself, am I creative enough? It's, it's not just, am I creative enough right now? 
that would help, but can I be creative enough? Do I have the space to do it? You know, especially when we're talking about video studios, do I have the space to turn into a video studio? You know, I when my daughters got uh, old enough, I turned their playroom into my video studio. My office is actually the second video studio. This is where I'm recording right now. But do I have space for that? Must I be in control? That's an issue for different people in different ways. I am a control freak. I'm sorry, I'm a control freak. Things have to be done my way. And when the question is, if things have to be done your way and you're going to give it to someone and you're never going to be happy with what they deliver, then maybe consider do it yourself. If you're not a control freak, it's a lot easier for you to work with other people in whatever uh, format it is. Do I have the time to do it? You know, maybe you're just too busy to do everything else like developing content, delivering your content. Those are, door, again, those are your two core activities or anything else. You know, I'm, I'm working on website design. I'm pretty good at it. I like doing it, but I don't have time to shoot videos. And so do I have the time to do it? Can I afford it? You know, I, I'm, I'm done feeling defensive about, uh, you know, some things are just too expensive to get them at the level of quality that uh, maybe a professional will give them to me. And maybe good enough is what I can uh, deliver and, and I just can't afford something else. So ask yourself, can I afford it? Do I have the skills? So creativity is one thing because creativity is what makes things look beautiful. Skills is what actually make them work. So do I have the skills? What is the required quantity and frequency? So again, I'll take videos as an example. If I need to shoot a video once a week and I'm okay with shooting 13 of them once every three months, then that's fine. You can hire somebody, you can go to a studio once in three months, not too bad, shoot 13 videos, shoot 15 to have two spare, and, uh, and then you're good. But what if you need them more frequently? Can you work with somebody uh, to get it more frequently or you have to do it yourself? What is the needed quality? Not just quantity, not just frequency, but quality. Can I do something that meets the level of quality that is required? You know, you're looking at this video and, you know, again, I'm not trying to brag here, but the quality is pretty darn good here. I do it myself. Can it be better? Of course it can be better. Are there other professionals that can do it better than me? Yes, the question is, do you gain anything by the added quality? So what is the needed quality? What else could I be doing at this time? And this is an important one because this, this really reflects on lost opportunities. So if I'm doing this, am I not able to do anything else at this time? Am I willing to learn? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to show you a lot of things here that requires you to learn something. Some of the videos, I'm going to show you things. I'm going to try and take you, I am trying to take you step by step on doing things. But sometimes you just need another level of expertise, maybe a level of expertise that I don't have in doing this. And you're going to have to learn. So ask yourself, are you willing to learn something new? I, I love learning new things. I, I mean, I, I enjoy it very much. You may not. And, and it's fine. If you're going to be working with somebody else, do I trust them? Well, obviously, my deal, my, my key area is trust. And if I don't trust the person that I'm going to outsource it to, whether it's just an intern and I really guide them and tell them exactly what to do, but they don't do it on time, they don't do what they promise, they, they run out of schedule and so on, I may not trust them. So that's another question. I'm going to do it myself because I don't trust somebody else. Well, and an alternative would be let's find somebody that I do trust. What is the needed turnaround time? Again, the faster you need it, the better you are in doing it yourself than hiring somebody. And even if you hire somebody, and I hire a lot on Fiverr, doing things on Fiverr, uh, I, I look at what their turnaround time and I make sure that their reviews show that they typically do meet their turnaround time if I need fast turnaround time. But for the most part, some of the things, if the turnaround time is really, really, really quick, I just do it myself. Of course, as long as I answered the other questions in a way that allow me to do it myself. Is it fun for me? I'm going back to get your hands dirty. 
you, you got to be willing to get your hands dirty and not everything is going to be fun. But you know what? If you have to decide, do I do this myself or do I do that myself? Whatever consideration, how about I choose the one that is more fun? Everything else being equal because there are other questions I went through. Will they know what I know? So, you know, you have a lot of things in your head and you need to convey to somebody who's going to do something and sometimes you're going to get the 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 deliver the, the product you're going to get it back and go well that's not what I was envisioning so do they understand my business do, do they understand the business of speaking do they understand the business of trust are they going to deliver something that's going to require a lot of changes because I cannot communicate everything that I know to them. I mean, what I have in my head, in the context of what I do, I'm not going to be able to convey to someone that will do a great job in delivering it in whatever shape or format, then maybe I'm better off doing it myself. How long is the learning curve? Again, you're not going to be perfect. The question is, how long would it take for you to get to good enough? And that's a question you need to ask yourself. And if it's just going to be too long and, you know, I need those things done and I need them done soon. I don't have the time to go through the learning curve, then outsource it. Let it, somebody else do it. Uh, how far is it from my comfort zone? You know, pretty much everything you're going to do is going to be outside of the, the your comfort zone. The question is, how far out? I mean, is this like rocket science? Is this like something I can't even c fathom how I'm going to... That's a good word for an Israeli. Can I even fathom how far, how much I'm going to learn and, and what I need to know uh, in order to achieve that or, or get gain that skill? Uh, what is the return on investment? You know, I'm, I'm going to have to invest in some, maybe I'm going to have to invest in equipment like good, high quality video cameras, maybe something else. Uh, am I going to get the return on that investment? And then finally, how important is it? And, and this really helps in the question of, do I do it at all? I mean, outsource, do it myself, but at all, or, or just don't do it. So I have to ask the question, how important is it? Now, there's one more comment that I want to make, and that is, if you decided you're going to be doing something, whether you do it yourself, you hire an intern, you tell them exactly what to do, you hire somebody who knows how to do it more than you do, or you hire a company, don't reinvent the wheel. And, and that's a critical point. Look at others, others that you look up to, others that you think to yourself, this is how I want my business to look like, and see what they do. See what their websites look like. See what their courses look like. See what their videos look like. See what their YouTube channel looks like. What their LinkedIn postings uh, look like. And get ideas. I'm not, I'm not saying steal their stuff. No, don't steal their stuff. But you're going to get a lot of ideas. And don't reinvent the wheel. Don't try something that nobody else has tried. Uh, unless you're really, really certain that you're going to be successful and you know enough that makes you believe that you're going to be successful. So that's pretty much it. Again, I'm I'm done feeling defensive about doing things myself and and feeling the scrutiny of uh, hire somebody else to do it and you focus on your thing. I do a lot of those things myself, including this video, including putting together this course and and writing and publishing my books. And I do a pretty darn good job at it. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. What I'm offering you here is a strategic way to look at what do you do yourself and if you don't do it yourself what are the options i do it i hire an intern i hire a professional i hire a firm i hope this was helpful if this video was helpful to you subscribe to my channel and get notified when i release more videos like this also check out my resources for speakers at thediyspeaker.com